Hey guys, Haley Lane, aka Key Black here with another episode of Off the Cuff, and this time I am gonna follow up on the Ghost Rider thing that I mentioned last time, a series called Ghost Rider the Hammer Lane. It's a very short six-issue series that I think was published between 2001 and 2002. Um, basically, it kind of picks up after, roughly after the 90s series, um, it doesn't really have anything plot-wise to do with the 90s series, so you can kind of skip that if you want. You can even, hell, you can even skip the 70s series and just go straight to this one. It's sort of self-contained. Basically, it picks up where Johnny is down on his luck. It's, he's exhausted after having dealt with the Ghost Rider being his other, his alter ego for years. Um, and he just wants to be rid of it. He's taken this 9-to-5 office job. He's trying to be like a normal freaking person. He's even left behind his love of biking and doing all the stunt biking and everything. He's a sad man. Um, and he's doing his best to try and squish down all of his frustration at this new life that he thinks is going to finally be his reprieve from being the Ghost Rider. And much to his dismay, he learns the hard way Squishing all that down and repressing it actually makes it worse. The Ghost Rider comes bursting back and starts on this huge rampage, taking vengeance on behalf of anybody who wants it. That's actually one of the things to start off that I really liked about this comic, which is that it kind of takes the whole Xerathos demon, maybe an angel, who knows, kind of side of whatever the Ghost Rider might be, throws it out the window and reimagines it as this spirit of vengeance. It takes the title very literally. It's basically that which enacts revenge. It's a much more on-the-nose take. I really appreciated that. And uh, so Johnny, you know, in his horror at what has just happened after realizing that he just became a Ghost Rider and just woke up from it again, um, he starts drinking again. He goes into a bar. He's completely drunk off his ass and he's terrified. He, I think he asks a preacher for help and he just he's, he's just terrified. Kind of desperate for just some kind of final solution. If only this ghost rider could just be dealt with and gotten rid of forever. He overhears these uh, shady characters in the corner talking about how they've been hired to kill. And he, drunk off his ass, goes over and asks them to kill the ghost rider. Offers them basically his life savings. He, of course, leaves out the fact that he is the ghost rider and and this guy, Gunmetal Gray, I freaking love that name, Gunmetal Gray, uh, he accepts. He's like, I, I don't take these jobs because I like the money. I like the killing. <laughs> and so Johnny's like, yeah, that's great. That's great. Yeah, just let me know when you've done the job. Um, of course, it, it, it ensues very rapidly that the Ghost Rider does such a great job evading Gunmetal Gray that he starts to take it personal. And, you know, Gray and his lackeys eventually, of course, figure out that Johnny himself is the Ghost Rider. Um, and at that point, you know, Johnny's realizing these guys are willing to do literally anything to get their mark, like even kill complete innocent people. Uh, this is, uh, I'm calling it off. I don't want you guys to do this anymore. And they're like, oh, no, no, no. Now it's personal. Now we want revenge for you holding out on us. The whole story is, uh, it's, uh, it, again, it's pretty on the nose, but it's pretty sincere, you know? The, in, the recurring theme is like all these characters that want revenge, including Johnny. Johnny who wants revenge on the Ghost Rider for ruining his life. But you know, how do you beat revenge with revenge, you know? It's, you, you can't, you can't. The ultimate moral of the story is that there's no way to do that outside of forgiveness. There's this great scene where uh, Johnny confronts the Ghost Rider kind of in their, their shared mindscape, and he's saying something like, uh, why don't you just leave me alone? And the Ghost Rider responds and says, why don't you leave me alone? And Johnny's like, no, 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 that's not funny, that's not funny. And he eventually realizes, uh, kind of, kind of harshly, that the only way to defeat revenge and to kind of bring it back under control is forgiveness. And he learns not only to forgive Gunmetal Gray and all these other people that he kind of blames for his problems, but he also has to forgive himself. And there's this kind of this really cool scene and at the end, uh, spoilers, sorry, spoilers, where Gray is literally fisticuffing it with Ghost Rider. Um, and he's getting the crap beat out of him, but as he's kind of laying blow after blow and the Ghost Rider is hearing all these, like, these proclamations of vengeance from Gunmetal Grey, Johnny's hearing them too, and slowly the Ghost Rider turns back into Johnny and Johnny gets control back. And he just kind of, you know, realizes what he's doing at that point and looks at Grey and says, you know, I I'm not angry anymore. I, I forgive. And then Grey goes like, what, you, you think I'm asking for forgiveness? And Johnny goes, no, no, I, I forgive myself. 
I mean, Gray thinks he's, you know, full of shit, but he's all worn out from all this, you know, this fighting over nothing. You know, he's basically led his own lackeys into death because of their, their insane, relentless pursuit of the Ghost Rider for their own revenge. And he kind of, you know, he tries to land in a couple more blows on Johnny now, and uh, Johnny very easily dodges and clocks him and basically knocks him out in one blow, uh, at which point Gray kind of goes, you know what, I'm done. It's not worth it. You win. And so you can picture me reading this for the first time going, yeah! <laughs> um, I, I've always liked that kind of story where, like, you know, I've already said I really like the kind of uh, sort of edgy main character where he's kind of a monster. I almost always inevitably get a crush on a character like that. But what I really, really like is when the story addresses it directly and brings it to its natural conclusion, which is, you know, the character can only defeat that side of themselves by accepting and forgiving and kind of working it into themselves. I only really learned exactly what that was that I liked about it in as many words when I played the character Berkeley Tate in Jess's tabletop RPG campaign, The Rise of Balsaros, which I highly recommend. I actually might talk about that in the next video. Um, I, I, I'm gonna try to avoid giving any spoilers because it's, uh, it's very good. <laughs> she's, a, she's an excellent writer, and this is a very fun high fantasy series. But yeah, uh, I, I do recommend Ghost Rider to Hammer Lane if you're at all interested in what I found interesting about the Ghost Rider series to begin with. I, I'd say it's kind of... It does the same thing for Ghost Rider that I thought the Shadow Year One does for the Shadow. It basically kind of addresses what I wanted out of it, caps it off at a complete story, and then leaves it open enough for you to imagine whatever might have happened next. So yeah, thanks guys for listening to this one. Uh, it was fun to talk about, and I will see you guys in the next video. As always, please leave your questions and comments in the comments section, and I'll have a look at them as soon as I can. Thanks so much!